Singapore circuit breaker seems to have reawakened a love of reading. Now, here are some numbers. Nearly half a million items were checked out on the weekend before libraries had to close. But it hasn't stopped there. So bibliophiles are now making good use of an expanded range of e-books and online programs. Melissa Goh tells us more. Um, do you have a small towel? Or maybe Over 66,000 people have tuned in to storytelling sessions across four languages, according to Communications and Information Minister S.S. Warren. One regular attendee, 12-year-old James and his brother. To keep them occupied, the National Library Board has also added 8,000 more e-books with unlimited checkouts to its collection. We love to read books since young. I've always begged my mom to bring me to the library. The e-book is great because you just have to type the book in the search engine and can borrow the book and immediately start reading, all within less than 30 seconds. So I've personally found the e-book like one of the greatest things that ever happened so far. Um, there's an element of the mom in me that enjoys e-book, uh, namely no messy, no clutter. <laughs> Which is to be, if I borrow books, like 16 books come back home, it looks everywhere. So I would just start cream, screaming in toilet book, under the pillow, there's a book. So with this e-book all consolidated in a device, actually living like Mary Kondo minimalist life is so much easier right now. They're not alone. There's been an over 80% hike in e-book loans since the circuit breaker kicked in, compared to the same period last year. Biographies and self-improvement titles are among the most popular. For 58-year-old Madam Isia, though, she can't wait to go back to physical copies. Where eyesight are not that good anymore. <laughs> Reading from a device like handphone or this, uh, actually... Uh, uh, not comfortable with it. I read uh, a lot of Malay books, novel, or maybe just uh, some religious book. But at the same time, I also read uh, a lot of uh, children book because I used to read together with my grandchildren. Now, because we are living separately and during this uh, season, we cannot meet. There's no chance for us to read together. Even so, she says she enjoys bonding with her grandchildren by attending digital storytelling sessions together. There are online courses for seniors too, some by veteran librarian Felix Sa. Most of our programs planned for the month of April has been uh, fully signed up, mostly. Yeah. And we are in the midst of uh, lining up programs for May. We have seniors who are asking us to conduct uh, basic courses. For example, uh, we have had a course on how to use Zoom. Uh, as a platform yeah so that's quite basic and we have also a course on how to increase and improve the uh, your wireless network at home for example it's the first time he's conducting these online courses and sees it as a chance to learn with seniors as well for a closer look we're joined by Catherine Lau assistant chief executive for the NLB's public library services thanks for joining us Catherine now, firstly among the increase in ebooks loans uh, biographies and self-improvement appear to be the most popular is that expected? Uh, yes, uh, this is expected. Uh, we have seen over 80% year on year growth of ebooks since 4th of April. And during the circuit breaker period, many of us have more time to do self reflection, self care, and upskilling. So, in fact, self improvement books are most popular uh, among books being checked out. For example, we have books on mental resilience money management, eating well, and living with minimalist lifestyle. Besides e-books and audiobooks, there are strong interest in our digital programs like storytelling, book discussion, and online talks. We have pushed out many of such programs online, and there is really something for everyone. Catherine, you mentioned there about these uh, online app storytelling sessions. What's the feedback been like for those? We have received very positive responses. In fact, just last week, we launched our storytelling sessions in English, Chinese, Malay, and Tamil. More than 10,000 patrons have tuned in. That was very encouraging. Parents have shared with us that their children enjoy watching the video, not just once, but many times. Uh, we even have a 73-year-old telling us he also enjoy our stories. To date, we have seen almost 70,000 views of our online storytelling sessions. Uh, we have also seen that digital programming provides convenience to our patrons. 
Those who are unable to tune in at the time of the program can view it later. Um, we have created playlists for the Storytimes videos and it is available on our Facebook page and our Discover Reads website. For the coming weeks, we are working with local publishers and authors to include Singapore stories in storytelling. Now, Catherine, I understand the mother tongue language books and other online programs targeted the elderly have also been added. Uh, how else is NLB reaching out to, to this group? Uh, yes, we have updated our Facebook on our mother tongue language pages with the program information and links for quick sign up. Our users also can visit our website nlb.gov.sg and sign up for a mailing lists for the kind of programs they want to be notified. And of course, you know, this interview is another way and we are actively engaging the media to help us to spread the word. Well, aside from both, um, you also understand that there'll be online series featuring rare materials from NLB's collection and videos from the National Archives. What can we expect? Um, let me share with you three examples. From the Stack, Season 2 was launched today. Um, now, From the Stack is a program featuring rare materials from the National Library Collection. We know back in the 30s, theatrical magic was very popular in Singapore. So our very first episode features a very old magazine called The Magic Fan, published by the Malayan Magic Circle in 1930s. Our librarians share about how this magazine promoted the popularity of magic back then and what information we can learn about the magic community in Singapore. Another rare material that will be featured in is a 1878 plan of the Tanjung Paga Dock Company. This company was set up to construct dry docks and it was the forerunner of the Singapore Harbour Board and the Maritime uh, port of Singapore. So this map is an important document telling how the docks were organized in Singapore in the 19th century. Finally, the National Archives also put up the talks on the Facebook and YouTube pages. The upcoming talks will be on Singapore legal milestones and oral history research. All right, indeed, very interesting, and thank you very much for sharing with us. We've been speaking there to Catherine Lau, Assistant Chief Executive for NLB's Public Library Services.